What's going on today guys? It's Joe the Pro here back at it again with another video. Um, this video was requested by a few viewers, but today we are going to be doing a minor table adjustment. So basically the only thing we're really going to be playing with today is this rod right here. And this is what adjusts how uh, far the cups travel. So I'll show you the problem right here. We'll cycle the machine. I already have it on top of all. So watch after the things come to us. So you'll see the table come up and watch, see how that pin just shook right there? As you can see, that cup is very close to the head of that pin. So that's what's actually causing the pin to shake when it goes up. So you can see the cup's actually touching the pin right there. Um, for whatever reason on this machine, it's only the two pin that wobbles. All the other ones are all right, but we just have to move the cups back just a tad to fix that problem. So I'll be showing you how to do that today. But since you guys requested a table adjustment tutorial, while well, I'm doing the adjustment on the one rod, I'll kind of explain what the other rods do as well. All right, guys, so now what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to get all the pins out of the way. What I mean is get them all out of the table and off the deck just to give me some room to play with the cups once I lower the table and everything. So I'm just going to get in here and run the sweep. You can uh, set the pins manually, pull the lever right here, and then pull the table cam, and that releases the cups. So that comes up, go ahead, sweep off the pins again. All right. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the table all the way down again, but I'm going to, since the pins aren't in the table anymore, the cups aren't going to want to drop down. So what I'm going to do is once I pull the lever, I'm going to use my left foot and lift up on the back of one of the respot cells. That's going to make the cups drop down like how I want them to. So actually, I'm going, I am going to put a pin in the two pin cup, because that's the one that's catching. So pull your lever out. When you run the table cam, put pressure on the respot cells so they go down. Stop it right around there. So now I'm going to unplug my motors so nothing turns on on me. Um, there's nobody else here right now, so I don't have to worry about flipping the mechanic switch up front. All right, so I've got all my motors unplugged. I am also going to want to use my crank because you're going to need to move the table a little bit. So, crawl down here. My motor's already unplugged, so I could go ahead and put the crank in there. So I'm gonna run the table. Could have probably ran it a little bit longer there. That's all right. So I'm gonna Run it back on the up cycle until I get to the point where the cup touches the pin. Oh, that's great. Hey, um, I retrieved my piece of my broken crank here. That's not something you see every day. That's a first for me. But uh, we'll weld her up at a different time. Um, for now, I guess I'll just use a 12 millimeter socket wrench to crank the motor. All right, so let's see. Yeah, so it's gotta be like right there. Oh, that might be the problem right there. Check that out. It's actually, all right. So maybe you guys will see a little bit today because check that table rod out right there. That's the reason they're touching. This is what I was gonna say later in the video, but you, this, if you're gonna keep an eye on any rods on your machines, these are the rods to keep an eye on because they're supporting the most weight of the machine. Same, same thing with the one over there. There's two on this side and one on that side that actually lift the table. They connect directly with the motors up top. So what I'm going to have to do here, I'm going to actually 
yeah, I'm going to have to jack the table up and pull that grease fitting off and replace it. And then before the end of the video, we will review what all the rods do. I'm going to crank up this jack here until you see a little bit of movement in the table. You don't have to go crazy. You just have to get it so there's not a lot of pressure on that rod there. Um, last summer when I rebuilt all these tables, I had stripped all the cups and respot cells off, so there wasn't as much weight. So now, as you can see, you can see all the slop in that rod when I go and lift the table. So that's good right where it is there. So now what I'm going to do is reach up top and grab my 11 sixteenths open end wrench, which is right there. A speed wrench is helpful if you have one. I got the nut off, so I'm going to just slide that to the side. And as you can see, that is definitely worn. But before I, well actually, it's all right because of the lock, the lock nut on there. So what I'm going to do, I am going to remove this grease fitting here. I've already loosened it. You just have to loosen the lock nut on there and it'll spin right out of there. So as you can see, I have my new grease fitting and I have my old grease fitting sitting here. So what I'm going to do, since they are the same size, I'm going to match where the lock nut is on the one that I pulled off to the new one. So that way I don't have to go through and readjust the whole table. How we are going to do that is I'm going to take my very small flathead screwdriver and I'm actually going to count the threads from top to bottom. So we're going to start at the top here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten threads before the nut comes in the way. So we're just going to do the same thing on this one. So we're going to count the threads, same place, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So turn it down a few. So count again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So go ahead and double check that you have the right amount. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So now this one is adjusted exactly like the one that we pulled off. So therefore the table will be level once we install it back in the machine. better than it was after, well, after we replaced that grease fitting over there. So little stuff like that, I wouldn't really worry about that much. That should be fine. Um, as long as like when it sets your pins, they're not like wobbling like that, like how it was before. Because that's what causes the reset cycle sometimes. All right guys, so I've come around the lane one now and we're just going to go over all the table rods and what each of them does. There's a few that, on each side they do the same thing, but we're just going to review what each of the table rods does and how to adjust them briefly. So on each AMF8230 table, it, each table consists of about eight rods, and you have these two lower springs on the bottom there, and you have four springs for the cups, two on each side. So basically, you have rods, you have rods on either side, that are kind of on the top back of the table here. You have your lower table rods, and you have this one at an angle right here on the bottom. And then you have two rods on the right-hand side of the table and then one on the left-hand side. So basically, we're going to start at the bottom of the table. So notice this angled rod that's on the bottom. So on your odd lane, 
the angled rod on the bottom is going to be on the right hand side on your even lane your angle rod is going to be on the left hand side basically what that rod does is it actually adjusts where the table is from side to side on the machine if i were to extend that rod that would shift the table over to this way because the way to think of it is if i'm pushing on this side of the table if i'm pushing it away but there's these other rods holding it in its position it's going to want to move to the right hand side but if i'm loosening that rod if i'm pulling it and i'm not adjusting the other rods with it it's going to want to pull the table to the left hand side of the machine so you just kind of got to think about it that way then now let's go with the other two lower table rods so the one the two lower table rods that hold the curtain up what they do is that's what moves the table front to back but they can also adjust the tilt of the table same thing with the ones on the top so the top rods are more often used for adjusting the tilt but the key is to a keep track of how much you're adjusting each one when you adjust the table. So if I, I some, usually when I do these table adjustments, I take a white marker and put a dot on the top of each rod so I can keep track of how many turns I'm turning each one. What you wanna do is turn each rod the same amount of turns. So if, with these rods that go together, because these top two rods go together, the bottom two rods go together, and also, the ones that control the height of the table, uh, the ones that connect to the four through six pin tube, those actually support the table up in the air. If it weren't for those rods, the table would go crashing down on the deck. Most of these rods on the, t on the AMF 8230 table are supposed to be adjusted in pairs. So if I'm adjusting the top two, I'll put a white dot on there and if you're adjusting, if I adjust this one by one turn, you also have to adjust that one by a turn the same. And, but that one you, is the opposite way. So if, I'm, if I turn this one counterclockwise, I'm going to turn the one on the left-hand side clockwise because the threads are reversed different ways on each side. It's kind of complicated, but once you get in there, you'll see what I mean. Same thing on the bottom. But when you adjust the rods on the bottom, you're, you have to loosen your curtain or just pull the curtain down for temporarily. What I'm going to do, we're going to come up with a scenario here. So let's say sometimes when the table is too far to the back of the machine, when the distributor is on the corners or in the back, it's, there's, too much, there's not enough space for it to move. And that actually causes some distributor jams in the back. So the way to do it when if you're having an issue like that so first in regards to adjusting the table you're going to want to adjust all the rods in the back at the same positions so what i would do of about one or two turns at a time you're going to want to turn so let's say i would start with two turns so you would want to turn this rod two turns counterclockwise the rod on the left you would do two turns clockwise same thing on the bottom because if i shorten the rods on the top you got to think of it like kind of how we thought about the side to side rod so i'm not adjusting any other rod on this table if i'm shortening the rods on the top what is that going to do that's going to pull the top of the table back towards you and that's going to lift the front up a little bit it gets all on level if you just do one so you always want to adjust both of them at the same time if you're moving the table backwards you would want to tighten up the top two rods and also tighten up the bottom rods including the angle rod because if i shorten all of these rods if i shorten the two on the top and the two on the bottom this rod is still going to be long so if i'm shortening them it's going to move the table over to the right so you have to watch that and that's why it's usually best to adjust the table when it's in the down position because that's how you snap these springs off of here uh some sometimes if you if you're an 8230 mechanic you'll see that there's skid marks on the spring shafts. That's from them hitting the 
sweep track there from it being too far one side or too far to the other side. So that's one thing you got to watch for when you're doing the side to side adjustment or any adjustment on these because um, it can get messed up really easily, especially like if one of these rods gets bent or something. But anyways, it's the same deal on the front. So once you adjust your rods in the back, you're also going to want to go ahead and re and make sure that the level of the front of the table is good too. Because depending on what you do with the rear rods, that may also increase or decrease the distance of the table from the pin deck. And that's important because you'll get the pins hanging up in the respot cells. It's not as complicated as it looks. You just have to get in there and kind of play with the rods and learn how they work. But that's just a brief explanation of how all the table rods work. And as you saw in this video that I'm making right now over on lane four, we actually adjusted this rod here. So that rod actually adjusts how high and how low the cups sit. It's not actually just changing the height of the cups. It's actually changing the, the amount of travel that the cups have in their whole revolution when they're spotting. So if I tighten that rod, that's going to make the cups not travel as far. Let's say I tighten the rod for the cups. So that's going to make the cups look like that. They're going to be pretty pushed up top. But what that actually does is when, let's say the cup's sitting like that, when it goes to spot, so it turns like that, it's actually decreasing the amount of this kind of travel in the cup. But then if you make that rod longer, you're actually increasing the travel. So that'll kind of make it go longer like that. And if you guys have any further questions on the table adjustments, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to help you adjust your tables. If you have any other requests for videos, please also let me know about those. If you haven't already checked out our new Facebook page, make sure you give that a look too. It's uh, Joe the Pro, same thing as the channel. And I think that's about it. If you, like I said, if you have any further questions about the table adjusting, please let me know and I will be happy to help you. So please like, subscribe, and peace, and do it like a pro. Thanks for watching, guys.